Hey guys, it's Chris at Highlight Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. What I'm going to be covering in today's video is part nine of my V-shaped guitar build. And what we're going to be doing is making the fretboard. That's the first part that I'll be cutting on my CNC machine. I always cut all my parts on the CNC machine, the fretboard, the neck, and the body. And I like to follow a very specific order. I start with the fretboard, I make it all the way to completion minus the frets, then I'll make the neck all the way to completion and then bring the two together. I find that that's a great strategy because if you glue a fretboard blank to a neck blank and then proceed to do all the cutting and carving. If you run into a problem, whether you make a mistake or you find a flaw in the wood, you've lost both parts. The way I do it, if there's an issue, I've only lost the one part. So it's uh, sort of a cost effective measure. And this, this video will be kind of interesting because I'm using some materials that I have never used before. When I make a fretboard, I typically like to use real wood. I just like the way the grain looks and I think it enhances the beauty of the instrument. However, in recent years, as I have sourced uh, fretboard woods like ebony, I have been disappointed in what I'm finding. The quality of the wood is declining, the availability of it is decreasing, and I'm having trouble finding woods that are of a suitable dimension that I need for the guitars that I build. So rather than spending way too much money for wood that's not going to be the right size or is going to be um, lacking in quality, I wanted to find an alternative and a friend suggested that I take a look at a product called Richlight. And Richlight's been around for a while and I'm sure many of you have heard of it before. It's basically a composite wood product. So I went ahead and bit the bullet and purchased a slab of black Richlight. And I really wasn't sure if this was going to be uh, a product that I... Uh, could trust and, and, and appreciate as a fretboard. But I have to say, after making this fretboard, I am really pleased with how well Rich Light works as a fretboard. It's very hard, it's very dense, but it machines beautifully on the CNC machine, which you'll see in just a moment. I'm also using a material it's basically a cast acrylic, and I'm using that as the inlay on the fretboard. Uh, it's getting harder and harder to find uh, good quality large pieces of mother of pearl or abalone, that sort of material. Uh, it's really declining in quality and it's getting more expensive. Um, so I decided I was gonna take a look at, at an alternative and I found this cast acrylic and the, the particular uh, product that I'm using uh, it's found under the brand name Kiranite. And what I'm going to do is put links down in the description below if you're interested in checking out both Rich Light and the cast acrylic I used. But as far as the cast acry acrylic is concerned, there are a lot of different companies that make this stuff. And it's available in a huge variety of colors and patterns. And I think it really opens up the door to some creative inlay possibilities, as you'll see later on in this video. So enough jabbing, let's uh, head out to the shop and start making fretboard. Since I'm gonna be cutting this fretboard on my CNC machine, I have to measure and mark the center line along the length of the blank as well as across the width. Then I'll extend those lines down the sides and I'll use those lines to position the blank on my CNC machine's wasteboard. I have lines that are engraved into the wasteboard at the center of the X and Y axis and I'll use those lines plus the lines that I'm measuring and marking to line up the fretboard in the center of the wasteboard. And that makes it really easy to quickly find my XY home position, which is gonna be in the lower left corner of the blank. And it also makes it easy for me to keep everything 
registered as I switch bits to perform different cutting operations. In most cases, I just use clamps to hold a uh, blank down to the wasteboard. But with fretboards, especially natural wood fretboards, there's always that tendency for the wood to bow along its length or to twist or warp. So to keep the board totally flat to the wasteboard, I'll use several pieces of double-sided sticky tape to hold the whole piece down. And then that way I only need to use like four clamps, uh, one at each corner to hold, to do the majority of the holding while that double-sided tape is keeping the board flat to the surface of the wasteboard. Then I'll carefully place the blank so that those lines that I indicated on the sides of the blank are lining up with the center lines that are engraved into the wasteboard's XYZ position. This allows me to position that blank right in the center of the CNC machine, which like I said before, makes it easy to find the XY home position. And then every single cutting operation that I perform after as I change bits are always gonna be registered. There's going to be multiple cutting operations to make this fretboard and I follow a very specific order that I find uh, is more uh, assured of achieving success. And so the first operation that I'm going to cut is the inlay pocket for the design that's going to be uh, inlaid on the, to the surface of the fretboard. And there will be several bits that are used in this process. Uh, the first is going to be a sixteenth of an inch bit, which will hog out most of the material and it will do so very quickly. Once that's done, I'll switch to a thirty-second of an inch bit in order to cut the fine details and that'll take a little bit longer. Once the inlay pocket has been cut, I'll remove the fretboard blank so that I can begin the process of cutting the actual inlay material that's going to be glued into those pockets. The material I'm using is called Kiranite, and that's actually a brand name. It's a cast acrylic that has a pattern that runs all the way through its thickness. And there are a lot of companies that make these type of products, but they all have different kinds of colors and patterns and all sorts of options that you can choose from depending on the look that you're after. And for this particular inlay design, I wanted a red pearl-like uh, uh, pattern that I could use for the roses and then a white pearl uh, texture which I would use for the stems and this particular piece is an eighth of an inch thick so again I have to measure and mark the center lines along the length and across the width and then I extend them down the sides and then I'll use those to position the blank in the center of the wasteboard by uh, relying on those lines that you see engraved in the, in the wasteboard. It just helps keep everything nice and uh, registered. Even though I'm going to be clamping this material to the wasteboard, I still have to use double-sided sticky tape because the pieces that I'm going to be cutting out of this are very small, fine detail parts, and those can't be clamped to the wasteboard. And if they're not firmly connected to the wasteboard during the cutting process, those pieces could go flying all over the room. So I have to use a double-sided sticky tape to help keep those pieces attached to the wasteboard after the bit has cut all the way through the material.
When I created the CNC file for cutting this inlay design, I was using an app uh, inside of Easel Pro uh, called Inlay Generator. And what it does is it creates both the pocket as well as the inlay files. And they're designed so that when you cut out the inlay files, they will fit snug and precisely into the pocket. So for this uh, particular operation where I'm cutting out the pieces of the roses as well as some of the thorns, I'm using a 32nd of an inch uh, two flute spiral up cut bit to cut out those pieces. The process for cutting out the stems is essentially the same thing. I've got to use double sided sticky tape and clamp the piece down and then I'll use a 32nd of an inch spiral two flute up cut bit to cut out the shape of those stems from this piece of kieranite cast acrylic. After cutting out all the parts, I was able to insert those into the pocket and in some cases I have to use a rubber mallet to lightly tap them down into the pocket so that they are flush with the surface of the fretboard. To permanently affix the inlay into the pocket, I use thin CA glue and drizzle it over the surface. Capillary action will suck that glue down into the pocket and permanently bond the material to the inside of the pocket. Some of the inlay sits proud of the fretboard surface and because of the fact that I'm going to be cutting slots later on and I don't want to run the risk of breaking my bits, I'll use some sandpaper wrapped around a block to sand down that inlay so that it's flush with the surface of the fretboard. With the fretboard clamped and taped down to the wasteboard, I'm ready to start the next carving operation, which is to cut the radius in the fretboard. And this particular fretboard is going to have a 12 inch radius. So I'm using a quarter inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit to cut that radius. Since I've already done the inlay, both the fretboard and the inlay will be radiused at the same time. The next carving operation will involve cutting the slots for the frets. And to do this I'm using a two flute spiral up cut bit that has a diameter of .024 inches. Now typically when you cut slots in a fretboard they should be about .023 inches. However, the folks at Richlight recommend that you cut the slot ever so slightly larger. And as it turns out, 
The bits that I use are slightly larger than what is normally used to cut the slots. And that's because I also will glue the frets in with CA glue later on. All right, there was one other cutting operation that I performed on the fretboard, and that was to cut out the perimeter shape, but there's really not a lot to see there. I just take a two flute spiral up cut bit, that's an eighth of an inch in diameter, and I cut out that perimeter shape, leaving tabs so that once the bit has cut all the way through the material, the fretboard doesn't go flying around the uh, shop. So that's complete, and uh, basically, that means the entire fretboard is now finished. So the next step is going to be to make the neck. And that's what I'm going to cover in the next episode, part 10, in this series uh, where I build this V-shaped guitar. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope that uh, I've earned your subscription. And to everyone out there, if you want to help support my channel financially, which is always helpful, uh, you can visit eGuitarPlans.com and purchase plans for guitars and the tools that we use to make guitars. Uh, you can also visit my YouTube merch shelf, which is displayed below the description for this video. And there you can purchase all those same plans, but you can also buy t-shirts. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for part 10.